Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 52. We're going to go with Jeremy for the BIPCOT NoGov license. Yes, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT No Government license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. Someone the- BIPCOTed my beard. Yeah, I saw Travis did that. <laughs> 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 nice. It was pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. I made it the uh, profile pic for my page. Oh, I didn't. I gotta check that out. I gotta see that. Dave's world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Um, so today we are back to the skeleton crew of the Seeds of Liberty, the original, <laughs> the original team. O- OG. That is excellent. Uh, <laughs> so, so we're gonna talk a little bit about. Um, the uh, wonderful Danilo memes that uh, Jeremy has been uh, cranking out lately and uh, causing a Facebook stir, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to. I, I brought wanted to bring up this topic, not Danilo. Every, every, it's not some. <laughs> he's not some narcissist. Right. <laughs> Good to point that out. But uh, yeah. Oh, that's a lie. All these memes are getting to his head. <laughs> well, whatever. Yeah. He's like, hey, how many memes have you got made today? Oh, that's right, zero. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have you don't have Jeremy in your corner. That's the problem. <laughs> oh man! I, every time I come up with a Danilo meme, I ha- I end up deleting it because it's too uh... racy. <sighs> yeah, let's go with racy. Well, you have to that... ask yourself. You have to ask yourself the question: Would a certain social justice feminazi approve of this? <laughs> a, a, a certain so-called Australian comedian. <clears throat> did I? Oh, I did. I say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh crap! I forgot. She listens. Yeah, listen. I don't know. People. Is she an Australian economist. No, she's a comedian. Or is she a, a Kenyan knees economist? Well, no. She's a. She's a... Yeah, I saw that in a meme the other day. Uh, sorry. Anyway, well, yeah, I, I don't mean to single her out, but she's pretty much the only one who has taken offense to these memes. I, I and think so. Yeah. She's. I, I said it the other day. I, I think I've offended her more than I've offended you, your wife, and your entire family put together. Or even me. Which I love Danilo. Well, I put, <laughs> I'm not worried about offending you, Dave. Well, I'm not really worried about offending anybody, but I just thought it was bizarre because this is now the second time it's happened. I've done two sets of these because, what was it, like December, like end of, like end of, end of the year we were, was when the first push of these came out, I think, when I did them maybe or I don't know, whenever it was. Um, and then I stopped for a while because I, 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 I went off to do other projects. Um, but she was the only one who complained about that first set. And it was I went back and looked because I thought it was actually because the, the last one that she complained about was actually um, just a, a remake of one of my original ones. Because now I had a, a different, you know, I had different um, layouts and everything. Um but I went back and looked, and it was the one that said, you know, it's basically alluding that you were going to help help the women um, let down their barriers to entry. Um, <laughs> and she got so offended by that one and called me like, well, she didn't say it to me, even though her and I have communicated. So she knows who I am. I mean, I know she watches Danilo's show. I'm pretty sure she's watched our show. So like, and we've had interactions. And she knows that I'm the one who posted it there. And she saw that I was commenting and responding to people's comments. But Mm -hmm. both times she still like talked like I was like it was basically like I wasn't there. And was just like your friend is very rude and I can't believe he's doing this to you and blah, 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 blah. I would be I'd be horrified (laughs) this time around. What was it? What did she basically say? She said if 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 you were if she was your wife, she would be mortified or (laughs) or she said she was mortified for your wife. I think like she took it to that level. Which started getting me thinking, like, maybe she just has a thing for you. I don't know, because 
It just well, seems odd, like, because all of your other well, fans... I mean, who doesn't have a thing for Danilo? Well, I get... If they're a lady. Listen, like, I, get, <laughs> I get that. Now, there's but, probably some guys out there as well. I'm sure there Let's are. Not. Well, no, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually almost positive that we have, a, we have at least a few gay fans that are following us specifically for Danilo, but that's fine. <laughs> that's um, I don't care. Yeah. Um, you know, put, we'll uh, put the S's in the seats and uh, I don't care how they get there. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, but, but this one, yeah. like, it, like it was just so weird that it, it, she got so upset about it. It's like, okay, Danilo is obviously not taking offense to it. Um, at least the last time around when I, when I was putting a series of these out, Monica was liking every one of them. So mm. it's like, I'm obviously not taking off him or his wife. Why are you so mad about it? You know, because like, well, like that's why I was saying. Yours have been tame. I think I, I think I did two or three of them, and all of them are pretty risque. Well, well, no, <laughs> I, I started I stepping the... it up. I started stepping it up after a little bit after you did. Like I started trying. I was trying to find ways to use economic terms in double entendres. Yeah, which yeah, was yeah. Awesome. Um, which was awesome, yeah. But like, I thought some of them were actually pretty darn creative, and uh, she just she zeroed in on two of them and was very upset. Um, that uh, I would. Your best one is, "Hey, ladies, want to ride on my Austrian business?" Well, flight well that was that was this one. <laughs> That's that she, my favorite. One. I know, but I read that was the one I redid <laughs> recently with a different with a different layout, and this is the, that's the one she got mad about this time, and you know she's mortified, and it just all of your other fans. Most of like when I look at you know I I check to see you know when because I get notifications when people like it if I post it to your wall like it's like at least half of them are women. And right. they're they all think it's wonderful. And like you see comments from like your female fans going, Oh, this is hysterical. I think this is great because they've listened to you enough that they they kind of get a sense of who you are. Yeah. And the whole reason we did this is because of who you are. We used you because like if it was me or Dave in the meme, it wouldn't be as funny because like, well, we're a little sleazier than you are. So it <laughs> wouldn't little, little, you know, little, you, are the, you, are, you are the you are you are most the definitely the clean cut one of this group. <clears throat> so it's very it's very you know, and anybody who knows you, like look at all of look at all of our other friends, like uh, you know, like You're Luis and Sterling. Sterling. They they they, they they think it's hysterical because they know you. They know you to be this very very, you know, very nice, very polite individual <laughs> that would never in a million years think of, well, maybe think of it, but would never actually say these things to women to their face. So that's what, that's a beauty of it. And it, like you said the other day, as a comedian, it's just, it's just so amazing that as a comedian, she doesn't find it, like she, may, she, she doesn't have to find it funny. That's fine. Cause it's subjective, but mm. to not even appreciate somebody trying to be humorous via economic means you know trying to find a new way to get like just spread the message and you know well, i mean we're also not only that but we're by way of weirdness through the internets of things supporting a friend of ours okay because i mean we're making content that is either in jest or essentially putting a spotlight on somebody who is also a content creator right yeah so it's it's all it's just to me it's just mutually beneficial for people like me you Danilo and all the other people in our our circles and stuff to to do this to support each other in the weirdest way possible if that if that happens <laughs> and you know if it's making memes of somebody if it's giving them money if it's doing whatever it's it's whatever man but you know like you said man it's just hilarious because you know it's I'm not gonna call Mr. I'm not gonna call Danilo like Mr. Rogers, but uh, <laughs> Danilo is a very kind soul and would never say anything like half the shit that we put. Well, in exactly. Danilo. That's, that's so, yeah. like I said. Like I said. Like like if other people had complained, like if 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 your wife had pulled you aside and been like, "Listen, Danilo, I I really don't appreciate it." Like I would have stopped immediately. Like, if Monica said something, I would have stopped. Right. You that know? was the first thing I I made one, and it got a ton. It went like. Yeah, that that, 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 one, that one went crazy. crazy, right? And then um, I was just like waiting for Danilo. Like I didn't, I didn't make another one for like two weeks. I waited for Danilo to be like, "Hey, nah, this is a bad idea. Don't do that." <laughs> she's she's Cause, not cause happy. I did, yeah, I, did, I was I was just waiting for like Mon to come see it and be like, "Tell them to stop, please." <laughs> But yeah, but like I said, like she appreciated it. Your other female fans appreciated it, you know, like 
And did you know, if I would have told you like when you were 16 that you would have female fans, what would you have said to me? <laughs> right, I know, right? <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's 16. If you had said it to me, I would have said, "All right, I made I I made it to the Yankees just like I thought." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, at 19, maybe I would have been like, yeah, all right, whatever you say there, man. <laughs> you know, as somebody who did stand up comedy for for about a year, um, you know, I can appreciate how difficult it is to take something as dismal as uh, Rothbard would put it, <laughs> the dismal science of economics and make it humorous. Right. How do you do that? Um, because uh, that's basically what we're trying to do, you know. Um, you know, volunteerism is at, at its core. I mean, I mean, I, I guess capitalism and uh, free market uh, economics is is um, you know Austrian. It's an Austrian school, right? And so, how do you make that not boring? <laughs> and that's that's the perennial problem that we have, right? Well, mm-hmm. I think economics is people equate that with math, or yeah, economics people yeah. equate with math. So it's like, ugh. right? They don't think of business theory or anything else like that. Sure. Right, right. So, um, yeah, the, the more the more humor we can use to spread the ideas of volunteerism and uh, and liberty, it's, I mean, why not? I mean, I don't see a problem yeah. with that. You know, it's a, it's amazing that some people find that that's the problem with the world. <laughs> Somebody making a meme about going to well, a park. <laughs> like I said, it's just well, no, because it, it's not going to the park. You know, that's that's like that's today's meme, and that's that one was a lot more tame. And you know, because it's basically was it just a takeoff of the one Dave did about the Federal Reserve that actually right. was the one that went crazy. Right. Um. You know, so it's like. But, it, you know, some uh, yes, some of the other ones have been riskier and and and, you know, I can't please everybody. No, you can't. You, you obviously can. And again, I don't I don't expect everybody to find them funny. I don't expect everybody to like them. But to, to really actually please yourself, Jeremy, if to, you really think about it. Of course I am. <laughs> I'm doing because it, 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 it makes me doing these make me laugh. And I know Danilo appreciates. So it makes me laugh harder. And I'm like, well, it makes me laugh. Of course. And yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I, yeah, every so often. but like. I, I, I just like I said, I, I just the, just the 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 level of the intensity of how upset she was. It wasn't just like, you know, I, I expected some people to be like, oh, this is crass, like one or two lines like that and just be like and then just and then and then not want to not want to interact with me personally anymore. But like to write paragraphs like she did explaining how to use the word mortified. I mean, come on, you're mortified <laughs> over a meme about a guy you've never met, you've spoken to, you've done you've been interviewed on his show, but you've never personally met. You don't really know. It's like the and you're mortified. Before. Like, give me a break. It's, I, I, I had a fender bender like three years ago, and I read the traffic accident report that the lady like filed with her lawyer. And she was like, Mr. Painter was driving with wanton, uh, <laughs> wanton carelessness <laughs> for every other driver on the road. And I'm like, hey, just... you brake checked me. I couldn't stop this piece of shit, man, and I hit you. <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> Sorry. I, I actually had that line used against me in court too, but by the by the what? Uh, yeah, because I, I I was accused of attempting to to purposefully run over uh, construction workers, which was so not the case. They just yeah they, yeah. Today I woke up and said, you know, I'm yeah. gonna just rear in some lady. Just <laughs> Wantonly, wantonly. No, I, I was, yeah, I, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was told in court it was, it was read that I, that I was, I was showing a wanton disregard for public safety. Does anybody really know what wanton is? I looked it up when I read that in that paper. I was like, what in the fuck does wanton mean? <laughs> yeah, that, that just makes me. I know hungry. what a wanton just, is. Just, just, uh, just makes me hungry. <laughs> listening to a wanton. That <laughs> I know what a... Ooh, I do love some wanton soup. Oh, okay. Wanton means. Of cruel or violent action, yes. deliberate or unprovoked. Yeah. Okay, yeah, rear-ending her was unprovoked. I will give her that, but well, no, <laughs> it was, is she, it was forces she, of nature that, that she's provoked. she's basically saying that you were malicious in in not not just not not just not the not not not, not just that you you know you let it happen. You 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 were doing it with like a malicious intent. Oh, you know me. Yeah, yeah, so that's like that's the, that's yeah. stepping it up a notch. That that's going right for the emotion, the, the appeal to emotion. That's trying to ratchet up people in her. Anyways, that's what she said when she was mortified. She's basically saying that we're showing wanton disregard for Danilo's yes, you know, pers- interpersonal relationships or but, something. 
Yeah, but I mean, the one thing you said, Dave, is, I mean, again, it, it started out kind of, I mean, the very first one I did, the very first one that went out was really just like an homage, it was meant to be an homage, because it was my one of my favorite quotes that you that I that I remember you writing a couple of years ago when, when we first uh, um, connected online, mm-hmm. um, and I've always kept it. And, and then uh, I saw that one and said, how can I fuck this up? Yeah, well, exactly. But then so it became like a kind of a gag between you and I. But then after that, it was really like, OK, people are liking these. Some people are sharing them. So it's like, all right, let's get Danilo's name out there. Like a, like I started the last set of them. I started putting not just Seeds of Liberty, but I started putting PeacefulAnarchism.com on there, too. Um, and now I'm doing that, that we're launched, that I'm trying to launch them from the, from the Facebook page. So yeah, like what Dave was saying, like it, that's what it turned into. It's like, it's an opportunity to promote you. I don't think anybody making a it's, meme has any other motives of other than I want to get this, as many people to click share as possible or get as many people to yeah. laugh or inform someone. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And, what the, the, the why the is Danilo the Danilo meme makes people laugh and it's fun and it, and it sends a message. It gets a, a point across because, you know, I was talking a little bit before the show about like programming people in language. I mean, just people hearing certain words that those words get embedded into their head forever, whether mm-hmm. they realize it or not. Like, uh, and you know, one day all of it could just come slamming together and then they could get it. So they might see Austrian business cycle on a meme or they might see, something crazy on a meme and they they think nothing of it right then but you know two weeks down the road it's like what is the austrian business cycle Mm -hmm. and then boom they're buying a robert murphy book or they're buying a tom woods book or they're buying a rothbard book or a mises Mm -hmm. book and that's all because we took five seconds to make a silly fucking meme Mm -hmm. and if somebody wants to get upset about that obviously their life is not really that hectic because if you're worried about other people making memes, especially that tells me a bunch of things about your life <laughs> really right there off the bat, off the top. Yeah. That, that kind of reminds you of, uh, I think Larkin Rose does that, um, uh, that strategy also where, where you just, you know, some people, some people require, you know, more in-depth explanation about these concepts and, you know, re- require reading a, an economics book to understand them. And other people just won't need repetition. <laughs> so he's like, just go up to somebody and if you don't talk about anything else, just say government is illegitimate and walk away. <laughs> That's it. And some people it works. Some people Access are like, you know, theft and walk away. Yeah. So you just say something like that and don't have no explanation. <laughs> well, I remember people- the first time I was like a, a hardcore Republican and I heard taxation is theft because I mean, p- that's not just an anarchist thing, right? It's a libertarian. Well, it's a liber- Well, it's not even a libertarian thing, right? Like it's yeah, uh, no, it's it's uh, no, it's Thoreau, it's uh, well, it's the, Thomas Jefferson, no, Patrick, Henry, all those kind of things. No, well, no, Jefferson. Well, they, they always made the case that if not consented to, taxation is theft, and I I do agree with that. But you can't consent to taxes because you get taxes tax whether you consent or not. So, or, the, or no taxation without representation, right? Yeah, so you just <laughs> keep is, saying weird... taxation is theft enough time and it beats into someone's head. And, you know, right. I mean, that's, I mean, if that's in your memes and that's in your things, and, you know, it's like uh, Google voluntarism. You might see that and go, I'm not Googling that, but that word is in your head right. forever. Forever it's in your head. <laughs> and if you're like me, you know, one of the weird ones, you see a word that you don't know, it's rather than going, well, I'll probably never use that word. I go, I have to know that word. Mm-hmm. Every, I have to know its etymology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, the way I like to describe, uh, you know, why taxation is theft is, you know, I always go back to the individual, right? Can you, uh, you know, take money from your neighbor and say you're going to pay for your <laughs> child's education? No. So, so does it matter how many of you do that? Or does it matter if you elect a politician to do that? It doesn't change the action, right? It doesn't change the There's morality. Stuff. There's a really cool video of Rob Gressis or Greasis, I think. I shared it a while back, but uh, he set out. He's a professor, I think, at UC Berkeley, or one of the colleges in in, in California, and uh, he has like two boards, right? And one's, uh, would you ever force anyone to pay for a charity of yours? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, right. Yeah, that's and then right. It's like put a store here, and then on the, and then it's like, what do you think of tax? Uh, is taxation okay? Yes or no? And then. Do you agree that taxes pay for essentially charities or something? I can't remember the ex- exact details, but it was like by the time they got to the third poster, it was like it all just fucking. You could see it in their face. They was like, "Whoa, uh, there's a big problem here." 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, or like, or even uh, Adam Kokesh did a video, uh, very simple, you know, man in the street video, you know, define uh, theft, right? And you know, like forceful, uh, you know, um, uh, expropriation of pro- someone else's property without their permission. All right, define taxation, <laughs> and just those two questions, light light goes on. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I, see, that's funny. Yeah, right. Well. It, I guess it depends on the audience because usually when you try that, the light doesn't go on. It, 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 it the, the, the door slams shut because the backfire effect kicks in. I had, I just had it happen yesterday where somebody got to that point where they should have gone, oh, and instead they doubled down on their original position because it, uh, other, uh, you know, if they if they were able to think that clearly, they 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 really wouldn't be status in the first place. Um, well, not even status. I mean, I mean, <laughs> it's it's all your indoctrinated beliefs, really. Well, of course, but you get people get. I mean, um, have you ever thought that the universe, the universe is just an idea that man created? That's just an indoctrination, right? <laughs> so, anyways, anyways, oh, no, we're not so, going so, down. So, that. We're not because, going down the existential yeah, rabbit hole tonight, Dave. Look, look, just because you're you're an anarchist or whatever anti status doesn't mean you're a free thinker of any sort. I, I, I think I've been contemplating that for a while <laughs> because that that just you're just going off of some kind of axiomatic thing that that coercion is bad therefore taxation is coercion and all this and you know you have to think a lot more into that you know in my opinion but all we can say is is that i can i don't want to be taxed i don't want to be stolen from so i'm not going to do that to other people because i don't want that done to me well sure you you can only... so so knowing or whatever all this stuff is one thing is regard that that's for not it doesn't matter unless you put things into practice right so you can say oh someone's a free thinker at least they're a status but that doesn't mean anything you could be a, you could you could say status is the devil but you could still be the most closed-minded person in the world well you know i mean that's just a side point on what you said it just made me okay. think for a second <laughs> um well, I mean, I, I guess so. I don't, I don't know. I, I was, go, I was gonna we need say, to have an existential podcast one day. Yeah. We need to have not, no, we have, and we need to have a, we need to have a someone else. Other well, than, if I can, if I can, if I can secure, um, the well, not necessarily existential, but agnosticism, really. Well, if we, if we, if I can secure uh, time to be able to use the equi- use equipment, um, uh, to do the show from Porkfest. Then uh, we can have the existential one during that one because I will probably be tripping on shrooms. <laughs> so uh, I'll be more than open to doing yes, the show. So yes, actually, actually, I probably shouldn't say that because then Ian will never let me use the equipment. But uh, uh, might be doing this. Right? I might. I bet, well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna. Try, I'm gonna try to do it regardless. Mine will be doing it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to. Well, I'll bring. I'll bring my own stuff. I'll see if I can at least get close enough to an internet connection. Or whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, what was I gonna say? The 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 definition thing. Um, yeah, cause you'd think if you present that to people like, look, okay, you know, cause I, I say it too. Like if taxation isn't theft, then why does the, or if taxation is not extortion, then why does the definition of extortion fit the actions of the tax man? <laughs> because Correct. just like you said, if you, if you look at the standard definition of extortion, and then you look at how taxes are taken from you. The actions are exactly the same. I think the they... only difference is that one is considered legitimate in the eyes of the majority. That's the only difference because the, even the standard definition of, of, of extortion, I believe, the one line is actually refers to especially politi- political in nature. So it's like it's talking about the fact that extortion, the word itself, is 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 focused around politics to begin with, heavily. You know yeah. that. So, but well, I mean, though, anyone trying to steal from you is attempting to govern you, right? When you really break everything well, down, to to, the, they, yeah, they're trying to control when you. When the rubber meets mm-hmm. the road, yeah, you're, control. When you're I would... not being in controlled, you're not being governed. But when you're being controlled in any form you're you're being governed so if someone puts a gun in your face and says hey give me your wallet they're they're governing you it's they're immediately governing i I don't know i I think 
If 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 it was if you're able no, no, to no 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 they're attempting to immediately govern you. No, but I, I I was just gonna say I, I think if if the, if those case if those words were so intercha if so, so interchangeable there wouldn't be the necessity for both of them. I think it's more of a control thing. I think govern I think governing Legally, is slightly right. different. Um, but I would well, agree. I would agree. People they're trying to control. If uh, that would I would in that in that scenario that you just that you just put forth. I that's what I would say. I would say they're trying to control you. Um, well, I mean that's government is to control control the mind I know, I know but it's I, I like i said i think there's two Fear different there's two different words for a reason dave <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, yeah yeah but no i i but i do agree with the premise of what you're just, I, I, I do agree with what you're saying though they're trying to they're trying to control you um in in, in that action anytime somebody does that absolutely they're, that's what they're trying to do yeah, so so yeah, to go back to you know when you ask somebody to define theft and then define taxation, you know some people get it immediately, right? And the reason I think is because, and not because like you know they were like some kind of I don't know malicious or evil, but just they haven't thought of it. That's it. It's like in that in their brain there was darkness and cobwebs, and they just never it just never went there, <laughs> never considered it. And once you point that out, it's a it's a label. And and then. Other people, like you said, the backfire effect, you know, immediately get defensive, erect the walls, and then, you know, it's our civic duty, you know, it's the price we pay, pay, price we pay to live in a civilized society, platitude, you know. Platitude, platitude. Well, yeah, they just, right. yeah, yeah, they just throw the, they, they don't need, they're not actually responding to what you're actually saying. They're just throwing, they're just immediately, um, I actually, I, <laughs> quick side, quick side note, um, I actually had this exact scenario, well, this scenario play out in a different form very recently in my personal life where I actually had to explain to the person that um, it's literally like you're standing at a pegboard and you're just waiting. And as soon as I start talking, you have, you're not actually listening. You're just grabbing pegs and throwing them at me. Because you're set, you're literally just throwing non sequiturs and straw men, just boop, 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 moving the goalposts, just throwing stuff at me before I've even finished speaking. So you have no idea what I'm talking about. But that's exactly what they're doing. They, you present them with that question: What's the difference? You know, where's the difference? And then if you try to explain your case, they immediately cut you off, and they're not listening. They just start throwing out these, the, this rhetoric, this propaganda that was pumped into their head since since they were young civic duty like you said they just start throwing that stuff out of you they're not actually listening they're just throwing these things out because that they think that's a mic drop and the funny this thing was when they assert that it's voluntary <laughs> because you know you can leave <clears throat> and, and i wonder well if it's voluntary then why do they need the guns right <laughs> why, why do they need the threat of imprisonment why <laughs> if we are the government shouldn't the government be actively arming its citizens and teaching them how to protect their property right. shouldn't that what they need <laughs> isn't that what they should be doing well, yeah, but I, I think I've I think I've I've come to the Shouldn't realization. We all have like a lot of guns, right? <laughs> well, see the, the 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 well, it's funny. This actually brings up another point for me that I I think kind of bummed me out for a while. Um, that a lot of people don't even use the "we are the government" rhetoric anymore. Um, that's because actually their guy isn't in. <laughs> what's that? Because their guy isn't in. No, but just in general, like even even people even people whose guy isn't like they don't when you because I when I try to engage with people in conversation, um, and if that gets brought up, like if somebody else says it, um, or if like another anarchist or something says like throws that out there is like expecting it to come out, like people are automatically like, well, no, we're not, and because they complain, so it 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 it, it kind of depressed me because they recognized it. And they still resign themselves to doing the same damn thing anyway. Instead of recognizing it going, oh, that's an issue. Maybe we should do something differently. Nope, nope, nope. We're not the, gov we're not the government, but we're just going to keep going along to get along anyway. It's like, oh. well, then and then you get them to finally admit the real thing. It's like, well, yeah, but what can we do? We have to go along. Well, yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's that's been the case for how, you know, 60 million Chinese died and 40 million Russians. Well, yeah. Well, Just mean, going along is how bad things happen. Well, yeah, but it'll never be that bad here. But that's that the can't core argument here. you'll get from these guys. Well, well says, it's not an it's argument, fear. though. No, it's fear. It's, it's not fear. even it's, an it's argument. It's just it's a reaction. It's a it's a defense mechanism. A fear based reaction. Yeah, it's a yeah. Well, exactly. It's it's absolutely defense fear based. Defense only descent, de, defense only exists because of fear. Well, think about it. 
Yeah, I, I guess. Well, I mean, that was too too objective of a claim. One could consider that fear is the driving force behind defense. Philosophical deep. I don't want to get railed by people uh, in comments later when they hear this. No, he, um, just, he, no, he, he doesn't mean people. He means me. Because <laughs> he knows I'll nail him anytime he, make the, anytime he presents an absolute. You know, I, I just thought of this earlier today. Well, then um, I should start doing it to you. <laughs> I, 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 I try saw, my best not to, man. It's hard. I, it's very I, hard. I mean, of course it is. I, I saw an article about uh, Venezuela and how how the uh, see that showing food. <laughs> I was just about to I was just about to mention food shortages in Venezuela, and he shows me the cheeses. <laughs> I'm trying to get and, us a Dave, Dave, Dave's Dave's like Dave's like the type of guy that would eat that would eat a sandwich in front of a starving child, know, right? and then and then have leftovers and just smile and throw it in the garbage and walk away. Look at that. Because you know, you know he of, starts talking about food shortages in Venezuela, and you're like, you look at these yummy cheeses. <laughs> You know, you know us, I'm trying to get us a, a sponsorship from the who is this? Probably Nabisco Corp, right? I do not want their money. It, uh, it reminds me of uh, you know those documentaries that that show you know the starving children in Africa, and then and then the uh, the, the person is like, what about the uh, you know the the the, fi the producer the director that was there filming the starving child? Like, did he give him a sandwich? Or, <laughs> yeah, right. Or was he just there? Hey, hey let me take your picture. No. You know? <laughs> All right, guys, pack up. Let's leave. Yeah. No. Reminds me of Survivor. Remember the show Survivor? Remember? It, yeah. Isn't it still on? I don't even know. I don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't have cable network. Yeah, I don't either. I, I never watched it. I know the show. Yes, I never. I never watched it though. Like one of the after the, like the first two or three seasons, like, uh, like some of the people started coming out and be like, yeah, it was really like what made it hard is like all the crew would be around us eating pizza <laughs> and like all the pizza boxes would be sitting there and you just sitting there looking at it like. <laughs> I want it so bad. <laughs> so, uh, could you imagine like all these fat cameramen come down there and film <laughs> all these starving <laughs> people of color? Usually, just sit, sit up for me, son. Sit up. <laughs> you look so, a little sadder into this camera. I appreciate it. So, uh, so yeah, so. So I was uh, reading. Uh, oh, now I, have so, I have so many bad visuals in my head now. They're like they're, they're like using like the, the the carrot on a stick, except it's like a cheese. And, and, it's like a cheeseburger, and they're hanging it over the camera. It's like and, it's like Jeremy, smile for. It's like look sad, look sad, sadder. You want this burger, don't you? And now you're 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 getting just what like one tenth of a percent of what's going on in my head at all times. Yeah, no, <laughs> oh, um, we should really plan these shows better. Otherwise we end up. In, I, otherwise we end up in Dave holes. I, I like this. I, I, I like this <laughs> up of our, our, our interviewing everyone every show, actually. <laughs> so, no, so, so I was reading this article about the shortages in Venezuela due to the, uh, you know, the rampant socialism. And, uh, and it's just amazing how, how popular Bernie Sanders is right now. And, and not, many, not many recent candidates. I don't, know if, I don't know one of the last candidates that was an outright socialist that actually said it proudly i don't, I don't know uh, and the no, last one was no major one that i yeah can recall. Been a, wasn't there's been, socialist or the, communist party well yeah there's been there's yeah the, the, no there's there's that's what i'm saying there, there's i don't think that i can't recall any major yeah major ones maybe there's well no because yeah the communist party and the socialist party have been here for decades so yes there's and they, and they usually put somebody up probably the last probably close to socialist but he was really a fascist i don't oh. know Right, You're defined so. by your actions, right? And these who, presidents who? are just puppets. So what does it matter? We, this is a good segue into our next topic, really. Hmm. I mean, well, maybe we should let the little finish your story about Venezuela since we've cut him off like three times no, now. No, that's, that's about it. It's just, it's just it's just amazing how popular you know the idea of socialism is. And actually, actually, I forget. Oh, oh um, I forget who said this. Um, oh yeah, I think it was a John Stossel video I was watching, and they were saying that if you go onto any college campus, right, as a guy, and you say you're a socialist. You are way more likely to get laid than if you were to say anything else, like I'm a capitalist, or I'm a whatever. Just say I'm a socialist, and well, maybe the Stephon women will right. swoon over you. Maybe, well, maybe Stefan Molyneux is right then. Maybe women do decide the future. Right, and it's a scary thing. Well, they, it? he, he, well, he does. Yeah, he does have a point on that one. They kind of do. <laughs> so we need we need to do a women's outreach. Don't bang guys that say they're socialists. Right. They'll end up leaving you with a kid because this, you know, <laughs> or the people with the, uh, you know, the che, che Guevara T-shirts, you know, the. Oh like, my god! <laughs> oh no, 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 my favorite. What was it? Somebody made a meme. Was it, was it a meme of 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 Che Guevara wearing a Bernie T-shirt? 
<laughs> I thought that was hysterical. I just think Bernie has no shot. You know, I, I, I made a bold claim a few a few weeks ago on the downfall, of, like just of what I thought, like just realistically knee jerk, and just there's no way. I mean, the, you knee jerk with a, with an absolute <laughs> statement? No, no, no. no. Like I, I just. I just said, you know, I don't think Bernie will get elected. Just- no, I don't believe that's what you said. I think I edited that episode, and I don't believe it was. I don't <laughs> think. I'm pretty sure it was. He's done. It's over. He's not going to get elected for uh, main reasons, but one could say his ethnicity. So, I mean, I know we have a black president, but whatever. You know, that doesn't really. <laughs> oh, what? Isn't that? Yeah, that there's there hasn't been a Jewish president. Is that what it is? Not that I know of, and I don't see how any Americans would want, would let that happen. Like, like. See, I don't. They they're, they're, they watch the news and they they they're lost because. Yeah, but I don't think I, I don't think that ma- I don't think that matters as much as it. I don't think, for, at least at least in the at least in the public eye, the public's eye, I don't think race. Um, ethnicity, yeah, ethnicity, um, re- religion, whatever. I don't think any of that matters as much to the public at large i see bernie um, sanders being like the president of like maybe one of the seven nations that pop up after the united states breaks up possibly now it's seven i thought it was only four or five or i hope it goes to a thousand mm-hmm. right? i I'd, I'd prefer it go to 300 million but it's just me baby steps man we'll go to a thousand then we'll go to 330 million <laughs> Um, so yeah, I do think it's ridiculous. It's like they can see what's going on in Venezuela. The media is not reporting. Well, they're not, the, they're not reporting like investigatively. They're not reporting how they should be. But you're not going to ever get corporate media to do that, well, right? They never want to show governments failing because when people when people know and they can see collapse in another right. country, they can spot it in their own. And governments always want to keep their their uh, can, their citizens in the dark until it's too late. Mm. And then they have to manufacture a crisis, right? That's what Venezuela done. Oh, you know, the reason none of this is working is because all the rich people are leaving the country. So we need to steal all their money and all their businesses. And then, oh, wait, we don't know how to price anything because we're the government. And all we do is steal. And then people have bread lines. And then the people of Venezuela, they're kept in the dark with all this feely, feely bullshit, right? And never any logical arguments are presented. Like, hey, do you want your kids to be able to eat? I mean, if not... Go ahead and vote for that guy. But if you want your kids and your family to eat, you can vote for me. Do you want bread lines? Because this is how you get bread lines. You win an election <laughs> in Venezuela now. And the Venezuelan regime made that a possibility by the failures of socialism. And it's like once these people get in there with these political ideas in their head, they think they have to take them to their logical conclusion. It's like when do you, th- when do you realize that a bad investment is time to pull out? You know, it's like uh, we got to take that hill. We've lost too many men on it already. It would be we'd be spitting in the face of their deaths. That's what socialists and that's what uh, central planners do. They like double down every well, time. Have, I don't. They have well, they have to because it's, it it wor- it works for they 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 have they have to milk it for everything it can because unless the unless the person is a complete ideologue when they get into it when they get into the whole thing at some level they know that eventually the system will collapse like they know it they you know you can't you have to be either you have to be completely naive to not recognize that these systems cannot continue forever so you just you just keep pushing and you just keep milking and it just goes to generation to generation and you just keep pushing the limits and you push the limits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I think people, once they get into like a big government structure or a, a, they get some kind of what they consider a false sense of order, because I think chaos scares a lot of people. Right. That's why governments exist. In my opinion, is that fear of chaos. Um, sure, but, but, the, but then you, then you reap what you sow because you end up creating, you end up creating chaos out of that fear. I think what happens with government is the what happens when you subvert or attempt to subvert chaos, but then government existing is also a part of chaos. So well, that's what I was talking about. You create you create chaos by trying to avoid it instead of letting it occur and let and let it, and let it, instead of letting chaos happen and creating spontaneous order out of it. Mm-hmm. You fo- you force things to try to to try to stop the chaos and it ends up creating a worse chaos Mm -hmm. yeah Um, look at the school systems like you're trying to get you're trying to say okay 
arbitrarily kids need to know this much. Like, let's say there's no, you know, under the table or ne- like negative thing that the, the, that the, the government's trying to do with the school systems. Let's, let's pretend like it's all egalitarian, right? They, they still set up these arbitrary points to where they say, okay, students that like, that's why there's grades, right? <laughs> like first through 12th, right? That's bulls. Like how that's stupid. That makes no sense because there's kids that know more than a 40 year old at the age of 10. And how, well, they're still sitting in eighth grade or whatever at that point, or whatever grade you're in at age ten. And <laughs> I think you're only still like third time. or fourth grade at ten, aren't you? Okay, you're third. You're in third. Fourth, no, fourth grade, or fifth grade. You're wasting I don't know. away, doing yeah. literally nothing. Well, I due mean, to arbitrary bullshit and the force of a gun. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, let me just say say one thing. Uh, uh, going back to the uh, the socialist, uh, you know, uh, would be tyrants. Um, I don't know if any of you follow chess, like the chess scene or professional chess, but I have been a big chess guy. And I know I'm no, like, I'm like a movie changer. I definitely do not follow the chess scene. I, right. just, I was well, not aware I, that there was a. I like I like the game of chess. I just I was not aware that there was actually a scene. Is that like does, oh, that, yeah. does that mean well, there's like groupies? Well, professional. No, no, they meet up in alleys, <laughs> dark alleys, and play for, for money. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Gary Kasparov. Yeah, the Russian. Uh, right, he yeah, was yeah. the world champion for like the longest. Yeah, 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 I remember him. Yeah, and I don't know if he still is, but uh, but he recently uh, came out, probably in a Facebook post, saying how he's completely horrified how popular Bernie Sanders is as a as an outright socialist, because uh, and, and especially when people you know um, uh, praise socialism because he grew up in Soviet Russia and he's seen the horrors of that. And, and and he's and he basically admitted, yeah, he did say that that you know people should be grateful of uh, of the luxury that capitalism has provided us in the way that we live in comfort today, and uh, and it's very easily forgotten, you know that kind of thing. And, and I thought that was awesome because I followed the guy since way before I knew any of this stuff. I was just interested in chess, and I, and he was awesome in chess. And just to hear that he thinks like that as well, I'm like, wow. <laughs> Yeah, so, that, so everybody I, I saw that. It was amazing. Please, please like his uh, his, <laughs> his Facebook profile, Gary. Kasparov. Most yeah. most most communists have never lived in communism, and if right, they did, exactly. if exactly. they did, they 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 had uh, they well, they were either brainwashed or well, exactly. Or they were part of the prowl of the Proler Bureau. Well, yeah. Well, we've discussed this before. That was that was the problem. Didn't we discuss that on the episode with Michael? Well, I mean, I think that goes for anybody living in a totalitarian well, regime. Yeah, I, to be I, I know, but we we specific, I think we specifically talked about your your mother in law. I think right, yeah, yeah. with uh, with Michael about Did the fact that, that she that... didn't that she did that the reason that she didn't find it that offensive is because she was get she was on the government dole. She was getting right. you know she was a government worker. Exactly. Um, but that is the pr- I mean that that I mean, he's not the first. There's been there's been a number of former. Uh, you know, people who formerly lived in co- communist or socialist countries who have come out and said this. You know, there's there's one video I, that's, that that I know got went pretty viral of uh, some much older woman who survived. Um, I think the Holocaust. Um, you know, and she you know goes through this whole thing about showing how the rise of not 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 like not the Nazism itself, not the you know the, not the not the the truly atrocious stuff, but just like the, just like Hitler's rise and the whole the the formation of everything, like she laid out how how, how everything that hap- has been happening here for the past couple of decades, like lines up with it, just at a slower speed, you know. And I've said this, but I've said this before. They've just gotten smarter. Well, the state, you know, the state, the 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 abstract notion of the state, just any state well, in general, you know, has gotten I smarter the because day, the people right? that. The people have just, you know, they've they've learned what what is what has worked, what has, what what has failed, mm-hmm. and the American Empire has had, you know, a few thousand years of knowledge to go through and figure out <laughs> why the big empires failed and what you know, and they so they've been able to drag everything out at a much slower speed, and it becomes the the frog in the water. Do you think government's going to trend that way though, to be more ruthless, more efficient, and more when it has um, to be? Efficient? Dude, no, I mean, it, it'll never because, be. It'll no, never no, be efficient. Obviously, right? But no, no. Think about how like technology goes, like, or like just the computer, right? Like, what what, what version of computer are we on right now? Like, it's immeasurable, right? So, what version of government are we on right now? I I think that government 
like the version of government that people will be on in like even a hundred years from now one like will be alien to us if there are still governments around and people uh, around assuming that I like don't... a black hole doesn't well, I mean, pop yeah, out of that yeah. large hedron collider well, I, I, I and would, swallow us all. I think I, the, the idea of government is a is a remnant of a, of a barbaric time in history where you know people rule by brute force. And you know it's only changed, you know, with the, uh, you know, tech, more sophisticated techniques of you know propaganda, right, and and uh, false flags and disinformation, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think you know it's inevitable that it will it will be destroyed, or, or the or the idea of authority, the idea of statism, is on its way out, right? It's a one way, <laughs> it's a, we're on the one way path out because you know it's like once people realize, okay chain slavery is immoral there's no there's, there's no president today, Danilo, could you just imagine a draft today like if you had to draft people today could you imagine if the draft like the the the, the military or whatever just came door to door and was like hey we got to get your son imagine these kids now they're all like what like in in high school or getting out of high school right. uh that they would be draft age would be they have no clue they're gonna be like hey you can't bring your cell phone be like all right well i'm going to canada <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I can't bring my cell phone. Plain and simple, you yeah. know. Yeah, so many things like that are are impossible now with the uh, you know with with uh, the 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 information age, the digital technology age. It's just they can't do that. They can't do it like that anymore. It's being government is a dinosaur. It's being phased out. You know, just like chain slavery was phased out. You know, the moral, um, you know, the the moral understanding of of most people has accepted that chain slavery is immoral and will never return. And the, the same idea with the, well, actually, of the state. Sorry to burst your bubble, but there are more active chattel slaves now on the planet than there have ever been in recorded human history. But in the Western world, there is no such thing as chattel slavery on the surface. There are still slaves in America that me and you and Jeremy and anybody that's listening will probably never know about. But the idea of government backed slavery in the West is definitely gone. Yeah. So, so, so wait, wait. So, if it's not government backed slavery, what, what kind of slavery? Are you well, no, not about? in the. Not, well, he's no. He's talking about. He's he was talking about there is chattel slavery, not just not in the West. You're talking about. You're talking about like in Africa and, and like. Yeah. Well, East, yeah, East, yeah, still, India, yeah. Pakistan, yeah. Kyrgyzstan, right. and yeah, this, it still goes. Off. It still goes on. Yeah, exactly. Right, that right, that right, still yeah. occurs. Yeah. Unfortunately, right, right, right. unfortunately, but it yeah. does. So okay, there's so maybe, no. Maybe like, so we, specify in the in the West. Well, no, that, that's why Dave said that. He said in the West, and that's why he he clarified what he was saying that in the West it's not, but yeah, here. I think what he was talking about here, if 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 I if I understand you correctly, is there is still slavery. We just don't know about it. And it's not it's not backed by government force here, like it like it used to be. That's the only difference. Exactly. Because there's 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 the sex no there's sex slavery that goes on. Right. You know, there's all those horrible stories yeah. that keep coming out of places like I think Cleveland um, is one of them. I mean, um, you get caught with a well, you get you you turn your blinker on at the wrong time. You get a fine. You don't pay it. You get put in jail. You get out and you have forty thousand dollars worth of debt because you've been sitting in jail. <laughs> that's slavery as well. So, free range, I mean, free range slavery. That's free, free, range, free slavery. range slavery. That's why I love so, that term. I mean, the same thing is is I mean, slavery. What we when we say when we think of slavery, we've all been propagandized to have one vision beat into our head. And uh, not really what the scope of slavery really is, my in my opinion. Yeah, and and a good a good um, you know strategy for a man in the street video would be like you did in your in your video with at the Trump rally, is uh, you know simple question uh, you know if if zero percent taxation is complete freedom, hundred percent taxation is is complete slavery. Which at which point is it is it not slavery? Right. Yeah, the that's people a great question. did not like answering that question. Yeah. Yeah, it, but you, uh, 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 well, I think it's something we need to look at. It's like we need to look at slavery. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what about slavery? Do we need to look at? Well, because most people's mind automatically goes to chattel sla slavery, and that's all they recognize. You know, that's why I always think the. That's why I think the the. The example of the Jews in Egypt is such a great one. You know, when when I first learned about that from Ben Stone, I'm like, that's awesome. Like, that's a, that's a wonderful way to. That's why I use that in my arguments with people. It's like, listen, they were people have no problem calling them slaves. They were tax slaves. Okay, so why aren't we slaves? You know, but people people have an aversion to that word because they automatically go to chattel slavery. They they associate the word slavery to well, just so mean you, chattel they don't recognize mo ha most people i've actually encountered don't even know the word chattel 
they just know slavery. Mm-hmm. They don't under, They don't recognize that there well, is a delineation of types. <laughs> most people don't understand when you say gun, you mean a stationary, uh, you know, a stationary object that can fire a projectile. All right, a so stationary if, object. Why does yeah, so like something mounted on a ship, uh, something you know, like no. a howitzer, something that doesn't move, a stationary something. That's what a gun is. Right, <laughs> a I, firearm is something else. <laughs> you know, so that's why everything's worded differently. You know, when you say when when the Hillary talks about guns, it's like, but well, the, damn, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want but a that was yeah, right, right, but that's about? Okay, all right. Well, that see, yeah, let's see, regulate howitzers. <laughs> that that, but, that that unfortunately I think is is taking it a little too far because as as well, much as as much as we like, to, well, no, we no, it, it has nothing to do with no, no, because as I was just gonna say, as much as people like, I know the three of us and, and a lot of people like us, we we like to be precise as precise as we can with our language for a specific reason. Stuff like that, unfortunately, is part of the common vernacular, and you can't really, because you know, unfortunately, you do know what the majority of people mean when they use those terms, because it's oh, become it's so common par it's common parlance. Like you can try to correct it, but stuff like that, I think, is a little, you know, I think that, you know, trying to get people to recognize like the straight up euphemisms of like extortion and taxation, because. Like I said, you know, like I described earlier, that the the actions are exactly the same. Um, the only difference is, is a legitimacy that's put on one. I think um, when most people say guns, they just mean this amalgamous idea. Yeah, of no, they, yeah, they most people mean, most they, people mean they, firearms. Most they, that's what they, they say. Gun, they, like again, but that's part of the common parlance. That's what they, people they, think. You're not thinking guns kill people. <laughs> oh, so do like our <laughs> candies. More yeah. more people die to bathtubs. In the right. United States of America, then you would be you would you would be shocked. <laughs> you would be like, really? These or, this many people? Or the or the number of people that that prevent crimes with having you know by having a, a, a it's, gun? It's, in, right. it's immeasurable because you also have to think about okay, if I'm going to rob a convenience store, if I walk in, the first thing I see is somebody open carrying. I'm not robbing that place because that might guy might get. John Wayne up his ass and say, I'm going to just fire down on this motherfucker and, and you're, you're screwed. And then he looks like a hero because it's all on camera. Right. And so, well, I don't... you know, so I, I say an armed society is a polite society, man. You go to a gun show. If, if you know what, anybody that's against gun, I want them to go to a gun show. Why is there not wild West shootouts at gun shows? Right? Right. Why, 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 why is it everyone walking out of there just with bullet holes in them? Boston that, massacre. That, Boston massacre. One person starts. Everyone, <laughs> everyone starts. <laughs> it just blows my mind, you know, a gunshot. So it's the last time you heard of a gunshot getting robbed, like in the middle of the, the work. <laughs> like they might get robbed. They, they might get robbed uh, at night when no one's there. But no a one's gunshot. robbing a gunshot <laughs> unless they're a SWAT team. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. I got. I got to remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, just simple gunshot facts like. Ups. Simple quips like these really put perspective on reality for people. You know, it's like, when's the last time someone went into a police station and just said, hey, I'm just going to rob everybody? Well, no, because they all have guns, right? <laughs> if they didn't have guns, you could go rob the police station, believe it or not. <laughs> if we can save one child. <laughs> if you don't believe me, let's disarm the Mexican police and see how fast they all get robbed. <laughs> I love I love that every time there's a gun control meme you see these uh you know the gang the gang guys <laughs> with all, it's like yo dog where do we where do we hand these in <laughs> <laughs> yo where do we register these at right <laughs> yeah that's my favorite one it's got like an AK47U full auto he's like where do I register this at <laughs> oh I don't I register it by firing it at anyone trying to take it from me well <laughs> I, I, I don't know how we got off the guns, but uh, <laughs> I, know, I, 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 I was. It's always going to get off the I, guns. I, I, I was. I, I, I had wanted to bring it back to one, one thing that uh, Danilo was saying before about, you know, I mean, to keep going with the the uh, the Kasparov thing and about how, you know, people like him don't, you know, they, they how how do they not see it? I don't get it. Um, but it I think that ties into the to the language thing with people are so easily swayed by by propaganda and stuff that just the fact that the term democratic socialism gets thrown around it really doesn't mean anything Mm -hmm. but like that's enough for people to go oh well if that failed that was 
you know, because most people think of Russia, they think, oh, that was communist. That it was communism failed. It wasn't socialism. No, no, no. Kim Jong Un is a leader of a democratic socialist. I, I, I no, 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 no. I, I, I know. Like I said, people don't recognize what it is. You know, same thing with Venezuela. They look at Venezuela and go, oh, that's been horrible for years. So it's <laughs> that's like it's it it. it, it these people that are especially like the younger generations that are like you know that are that are swarming to bernie you know that are going through the college system you know uh, you know like we were talking about earlier and and they're like it's so funny because i've heard other i've heard academics who are either borderline anarchist or at least sympathetic to the type of ideas that we espouse that'll that'll say that'll fully admit that there's this progressive leftist bent that, and there has been for like, you know, forever in the uh, higher education, especially in the higher education. Mm. But then they'll still turn around in this, in the next breath and be like, Oh, but it's still a place for, for ideas to be, for, to be brought to the surface and for people to experiment. It's like, no, no, <laughs> you can't have it both ways. If there's already this predetermined, you know, ideology that most people are supposed to be directed to how is it still an open place where ideas can get exposed because those ideas the any idea that doesn't conform with the overarching sentiment is going to get squashed in a freaking hurry well, that's not an well, open environment well jeremy you're not considering it's 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 nazi type socialism it's stalin socialism well, exactly well, that's <laughs> what i'm saying venezuelan socialism come on but, but it but it, it's the whole about those, it's the whole it wasn't though. done right thing that's that's <laughs> yeah, the right. attitude just it wasn't done right this, yet though, right <laughs> Under a socialist model, right, that these corporations who are obviously donating to – like, all right, so Texas Instruments and all the other big, uh, like, people who write uh, history books, uh, school books, te textbooks, whatever, these get – they get huge subsidies from the government. They get huge corporate welfare. They they donate to a lot of political campaigns and of stuff. Of course so, they do. So why wouldn't that happen? You know, look at who Texas Instruments is donating to. Look at who your kid – go next time your kids come home from school, if they're still in public school, grab their books, look at the corporation that's on them, and then go look – just Google that corporation's name and then political donations <laughs> and, and see who they're donating to and then go – Holy shit! My kids are getting they're getting fed this nonsense. Yeah, but see, yeah, see, I but I don't even think I don't even think who they. I think voting. socialism allows are the idea of socialism. Okay, I think this is a hunch, of course. It allows people collectivism, of course, allows people to strip away their identity through a self hypnosis, and then let everything be a, a collective thing, and they're easily or controlled when they think they're part of a collective. Well, sure. It's, so it's the, why wouldn't you have why, why why as a large corporation as a government would you want easier controlled people? Well, Think about it. It well, makes perfect sense. Well, what? I, I I don't know what your actual point was, so I can't tell you if it makes perfect. Well, sense we, we're not. on a big tangent about schools and socialism. No, I know, but you I don't I didn't actually hear a point in there. Um, I I wish. Well, no, no. My point I, was, I, 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 you had a point before that I was going to try to go off oh, of, sorry. but you went off in a different direction. Um, I, I was going to say that I don't think it necessarily matters, you know, who they're donating to. It's just the fact that they're tied into the government in the first place. It doesn't matter because they're, they're, because if yeah, because you're right, you tell them to go look, they're most likely getting it from both sides. But even if they weren't, they're still getting the subsidies you referred to, which is the point. Like. Once the federal government is subsidizing the largest producers of textbooks in the country, it's game over. And that's been going on for a very long time. But people it, don't even it, it, people don't, don't even want to look like people just because that's that, that that's when the the fear that you spoke about earlier sets in and people don't people don't want to think of these the possibility that They've been lied to. They've participated in this lie. They've helped it along, and that the people that they believe they are putting forth as their representatives are actually these turn whether they start out with or become these sociopathic um, scumbags. <laughs> that uh, I, I think, uh, Jeremy. I think you recently had a, a taste of a uh, of uh, government history propaganda with your uh, Lincoln meme. <laughs> In the oh my god, he gets so <laughs> mad. Underneath that. 
<laughs> so I, mad. I, I, I read those and uh, what did I say? Did you see it both of? Did you see both of them? There was two threads on it because it started on the on the voluntarism page. Oh, I got because I sh- I shared it to voluntarism. Oh, right. okay. And he first commented there, and he was obviously a fan of Lincoln's, and did not take it very well. Um, yeah, obviously, Russell, obviously, we're, well. we're we're doing we're doing visual radio, uh, vi- visual visual humor here that's not present. So for anybody who hasn't seen it, the 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 sh- the, the, the be a shame if series that I've I've been doing recently of memes. <laughs> Um, the Lincoln one that went out today with, uh, you know, where it calls him a tyrant and has uh, John Wilkes Booth saying it would be a shame if somebody toppled him. Well, somebody got very upset about this and uh, and then tr- kept trying to insist that I was like cheering assassination and that basically that that was my answer for things. And I was like, where when when did I say this? Where all I said was Lincoln had it coming. All you said he did. Was Lincoln is a tyrant, which is correct. And that it would be a shame if someone toppled him. Well, no, is, I no, no, well, no, it's not really correct. Well, but one of the one of the funny. one of the one of the hashtags that I put at the top of it was Lincoln had it coming because I believe he <laughs> oh, did. Yeah. Okay, I okay. believe he did. He he hey. wasn't he wasn't a good it, 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 guy. You read? No, no, no. Let's strip. Let's strip this away. Let's strip President <laughs> Lincoln away, and let's strip away. Uh, or, or not? Let's not strip. Let's not. Let's just strip Lincoln away. All right. So but we the say list, the statement. The meme, the meme was about Lincoln. Statement. How can we? President got assassinated. Now, does that sound crazy to anybody? Like, presidents get assassinated throughout history all the fucking time. That shit happens that, across it's the not, world. It's not, it's not the, that's not the point. Why would you get rustled about it, though? No, no, no. It's <laughs> that not, shit he, was he, 200 he, he, years ago. He, no. was saying, he was saying violence or is not the answer, right? No, yeah, he was and, saying and, that. And, I, and, yeah. And, yeah, right? And I was, and I was thinking. And you were espousing violence how? No, no, no. Well, well, yeah. There's that, and then, and then I was also thinking, like, wait a minute. So you're completely ignoring like the 500,000 people that died <laughs> because of his, uh, you know, initiated northern aggression against the South. Did you, did you forget about that? Well, that, that, that's <laughs> well, because well, 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 again, in in typical, um, I mean, he 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 tried he he ended the guy ended up turning around later apparently, and I, I just never went back to it. But he like he he tried to reengage me in conversation after I bas- after I straight up called him a sophist and said I'm walking away from you because you're just yeah. he just kept like he just literally just kept like throwing stuff out there and just like making stuff up. And I'm like, dude, I none of this is here. I don't know where you're getting any of this from, but whatever. Um, but he basically he he acted like he's sympathetic, I guess, towards uh, the voluntarist idea. Um. <laughs> Although but, if you check this channel, his his banner is like running for president. I I know, but he basically, <laughs> but he basically, he basically plant a seed. Yeah, but he basically said, uh, you know, he he kept referring to violence, and violence is the answer. And, and twice I tried to point out that there's nothing inherently wrong with violence. Mm-hmm. It's the initiation of that violence or aggression, the right. the, the phrase that we use more often, that right. is the problem. Because self defense is a violent act. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, so you're you're still committing violence at that point, but well, it's not always you know, a violent act. But yeah, well, okay, but it can, it can be. You know, like okay. so, like, but but there's sorry, I'm so into semantics. It's not funny. But there's nothing. Bad. But so there's nothing inherently wrong with violence. It's the initiation of that violence that people like us have a problem with. And I tried to explain it to him twice. Kept going right over his head, and he kept coming back to the fact that. You know, cause again, that's where the that's where people's minds, after they've been indoctrinated so for so long and they've been molded into this certain form, you know, even with the ones who like that, that may be closer to breaking free because they're thinking, they're asking questions. You still there's certain it you know, and I, I even in that in that thread, I ended up throwing my sacred cows my sacred cows constitution meme because yeah. it fits because <laughs> there's certain things. That even people who have started to question will still not touch. You know, my dad's like that. My dad, to this day, I still can't convince him that Jefferson and Washington were not the wonderful guys that he thinks they were. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's still like he's got everything else, but it's still that. No, no. All right, all right. So, so, Jeremy, I've got this friend named Ralph. He owns a bunch of slaves. What do you think about this guy? Ralph sucks. Okay. Well, oh, actually, Ralph was was Jefferson and Washington. Well, no, but 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 again, that's when the justifications come out. Okay. Oh, that was the way. That's the uh, way. It was. Yeah, that's yeah, the way it was at the time. They, they were born into it. It's not uh, their yeah, you know, <laughs> I got new. I so, got so. so I, oh, I sorry, think go one, one of the, one of the best euphemisms that uh, is not often uh, 
um, focused on is the, is the idea, the word president, you know, we say the president of the United States. I think we would do better to change that to mass murderer. So we say mass murderer Roosevelt, mass murderer Obama, mass murderer Bush. And I think that gets the point across where people have this block, mental block. No, he's just the president. He just, he just, he just does stuff, you know. I think it should be changed from president to grand puppet. <laughs> so grand puppet, grand, the grand puppet Obama. Because, I mean, right. he is the most glorified puppet on the planet right now, right? Right. Because, like, I mean, we all agree that the United States government is not ran by the politicians, right? Right, right. But, oh, but I mean, right. it fundamentally it doesn't matter, though, because, I mean, yeah. you, you could say mass murder Rothschild, but still, somebody's got to take the blame. And, and along the chain of command, you know, who's to blame, like, for, you know, from the, the soldier in, in, in Iraq, all the, the president, the who's, the mass who's, murderers. <laughs> who's to blame? Everybody is to blame. Everybody well, there's, there's command, culpa you know? yeah, there's culpability to go around, but it, but, well, but, 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 but to, a, to a degree. Yeah, too, and, un yeah. and unfortunately, the, the, the harshest reality that most people, especially most of the troops, don't want to face is they are the most culpable. The ones who carry out, who the ones who actually carry out the act, unless they are actually like literally brainwashed or literally like, you know, whatever, like put in a catatonic state or like, I guess, MK Ultra, you know, with, with the exception of like, with, with, with well, those exceptions. Um, Unless you were like they're a, the ones carrying out the act, whether right? you following or, order, whatever. You're the one did it, so you're the one with the highest level of moral culpability at that point. Um, and that's the thing. Again, that's something people don't want to face. They don't want to. They don't want to recognize that because it hurts. It it hurts. It hurts and, your head. It and, hurts everything to think about these things. And the other what? thing is, oh, uh, because the other thing is, that, you know, uh, Jeremy, you're saying about your father and and his love for. For Washington, you know, the greatest presidents that we all revere or, or are taught to revere in our government schools are the ones that have killed the most yeah, people. Yeah, they're, they're some right? of the worst freaking people. Holy right. shit, you're right. It is. <laughs> Look the at greatest. all of them. Yeah, the, the, Roosevelt, the, Roosevelt, all of them. The top, the top ten, the top ten, the top ten list all the time. Yeah, Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt. Um, Will, uh, um, Lincoln, <laughs> LBJ, LBJ, Lincoln. Oh yeah, everybody, everybody from both sides loves Tru Lincoln. Tru Truman, don't, don't forget. Ooh, that. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> there may or may not be a Truman meme, meme coming out soon. Just, <laughs> nice. just to uh, say, anyway, by, it was by request. Nice, uh, nice. One of our fans requested um, it multiple times. So, yeah, I, 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 the whole thing is ridiculous. The whole president thing. All that, but uh, I I think this is a good segue actually to what I wanted to talk about tonight <laughs> for I guess a, a few minutes because we, we're going kind of long. Um, this whole voting thing, talking about voting, talking about the president, talking about all, it's all in my opinion pointless. You could literally go out around your entire city with a shovel and a bag of seeds and do more <laughs> for humanity. A bag that, of seeds, a seeds of liberty. That, yeah. yeah. No. Well. Yeah. But... <laughs> or actually, pretty much any type of food seed would work too. Right. That... Yeah. Yeah. You could plant trees. Anything. anything. Or cannabis. Cannabis seeds. Yeah. You could plant, <laughs> plant cannabis seeds around the entire city. Who cares? Whatever. You do anything. That's... Right. I, I've said uh, that for years. And, it's the quickest it's like, way to end anything. I made a post a while back ago. Right. So. Rand Paul spends all this hours, all this time. Getting a hundred mil or hundred or one million phone calls in Iowa, right? Doesn't even get four percent of the vote. Imagine all that time orchestrating and spent time calling on people, if all of that was spent doing s literally anything else, painting cities. It doesn't matter anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Just, I, just that he's, one he's, thing. But he's and Ron Paul's son, spent. so he gets a pass, you know. Well, no, no, I'm just that's just one case on a layer of a cake that's a ten billion layers thick. <laughs> so, uh, it's just so pointless to waste your time voting, doing any of this stuff. And and if you don't see that, then open your eyes a little harder, in my opinion. Well, I mean, we've obviously we've been having some discussions about this lately. I had another one today with another friend of mine who was only a year or two ago was running for office as a libertarian um and i thought it finally gotten over it but apparently she hasn't um but it's the, it's it's sad to see the the mental gymnastics a lot of people um so-called liberty-minded people so you know so-called libertarians um that, that they'll go through to to justify this and then act like oh well you're just 
Um, you know, they they try to pull out like the no true Scotsman and at, like at least I'm doing something. Well, yes, yeah, you know, and that was the thing. I got that today from That's this. I got that today from this woman. And and not only did I get it, well, well, I can't. She she actually put it as I can't sit by. You know, I can't sit by and do nothing. But <laughs> as soon as she said that, I replied with, "So are you saying that somebody like myself is because I choose not to vote is doing nothing? Are you saying that by doing podcasts, by being on national radio now?" Um, by trying to educate my family, friends, and my clients, um, by taking my business in an agorist direction, by encouraging entrepreneurship um, among other people, um, by trying to put either my time, effort, or money towards projects that are helping make the state obsolete or can make the state obsolete, um, raising my raising my kids when I get the opportunity as peacefully as I can um, to try to you know to try to ha hopefully have them get a jump start on on on, on learning all these things um, you know growing starting to grow my own food um, so all of these things like I'm not doing I'm done I'm doing nothing and her response was I think it's great that you do those things but to me <laughs> you are you are letting the people like you are the ones letting the sociopaths take over and i'm like you already that's what already i said taking over that's what i said i'm what like is she talking about? that's what i said i'm like you got to be kidding me i'm like you know as well as i do i'm like you know this stuff too the, the sociopaths have always been there they're drawn to power that's kind of the point Ask, ask, ask somebody about voting this. Do you believe that the United States government is currently being ra ran by the politicians that are elected? No one will say yes because they were stupid but if still, they say yes. But still... So then you go, why do you vote then? Because if your vote really doesn't matter in the case that it doesn't matter who's elected, someone else is running the show, you know, 80% of government officials are unelected. Right. Yeah, but, right. But exactly. your, your vote matters nothing. <laughs> it's got to be more than 80% because there's only what? Oh, I mean, if there's you really only... count senators who get reelected no matter what, oh, or gerrymandering, or... I mean, fucking, they're in there forever. Well, but so, I wasn't even going to say that. I was just going to say there's only You know only, you have what? a 98% chance to get reelected to no, a senatorial it's campaign? It's not 98%. Yes, it's 98% no, if you're an 98. incumbent. It's not, it wasn't 98%. Okay, well, it was something stupid. It was, 80, it was, 80, it was like 89 to 90. So oh, well, sorry. I flipped too. I'm dis <laughs> I'm listexic. Yeah. <laughs> But, <laughs> right <laughs> so but but yeah but that the the like so, I, it's I, like again they but they're just trained to think that they they're that's what the, that to, to most people that's doing something it, can, it, it doesn't matter of, i'm still doing something if, if it doesn't matter it, how are you doing anything it reminds me of for the mob boss then we're gonna get ruled by a bad mob boss right <laughs> it reminds me of uh of uh larkin rose's uh of analogies like well my uh my head hurts all right, let me smash, you know, stub my 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 toe in the door. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Because my head hurts. Is it improving? No, but I'm doing something. At least I'm doing something. Hey, my my car's totaled. Why don't I get somebody else to drive it and see if they can get it to work? That's what that's what someone's telling me right now when they're like, "Hey, you should vote. I, I should vote for a new driver of a wrecked car." Right. Why? Well, Why? Why? Tell me, please. Or, or, that, that's or get, quantify or get, this. Or getting a new president on a on a wrecked car is like just painting, painting, repainting the car. <laughs> well, it's not, but see, it's not even that because because most people will, you know, they 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 can weasel out of a lot of these arguments by just saying it's just the past couple of presidents or the past couple of generations of whatever you know. Like, <laughs> I, what I the, the the one of the discussions we were having the other day with with one of our friends. Um, who I think is mad at, at both Dave and I now. Um, but because uh, I, I usually hear, and I've actually heard this from other anarchists, that voting, and Dave's actually said this in the past, although I know he's now changed his position on this, but that it's it's a pragmatic thing to do because you're still trying to do something. You're still trying to shrink government. So, 
and I, I've always made the moral case. Like that's always been my that's been my argument since I since I I came to all these conclusions was that it's it's the moral argument is why I don't vote because to me it's I don't know it's, if I've made a pragmatic case, but I, I get what you're saying. You, no, no, yeah, but you, no, you have not not for yourself, but for other people. Oh yeah, you've, yeah, yeah. you've now shied. Now you've now backed off of that too. That's what I was saying. But you had in the past. Um, I still carry that stance sometimes. But, but, I just but, but, my, but inner, this is, my but, inner rage out. My stance is that I'm not going to vote. I don't care what you do. But yeah, but but again, I I I I decided to, to try a different approach with these guys the other yesterday, and I I kind of flipped the pragmatic thing on their on on it on the on its head for them, and I said, listen, you keep talking about how prag pragmatic uh, you know pragmatism pragmatism. Well, let's talk about pragmatism. What actually is more pragmatic in this situation? Is it spending whatever time, energy, and or money you have to attempt to get a specific candidate or a couple of candidates elected in hopes that they could possibly do something to reduce the size and scope of, of the state, even though nobody before them has been able to do so because every time one little thing was done, 500 more um, big things or small things or medium things were done, half of them behind the scenes, at the same time that nobody had any idea was going on, and the government still grew even though people thought it was shrinking. So you Aren't have they, no I historical... Reagan said he was going to destroy the, the Department of Education yeah, budget, yeah. right? Yeah, that was, yeah, the Department of Education was only a year or two old when he, came, when he was running for president, and he said he was going to get rid of it, and not only did he not get rid of it, he empowered it. But the, point, the, po- the point is that, <laughs> like, well, okay, what's more pragmatic? It's doing all that and spending all that time in hopes that it could happen or spending that same amount whatever it was of time energy and or money into helping make the state obsolete into putting your time and effort and money into projects services that can rival the state help make it obsolete how, like, do anything like what's actually more pragmatic and i said i'm going to choose the latter every damn time and it to me it's not a matter of opinion because which is it? What do you like? Because most of these people, when you corner them, will admit that A, they know their vote doesn't matter. And B, they know there's little to no chance of anything actually getting changed. But they would rather cling to that slim possibility rather than expend the same amount of energy that to do things that would have a discernible impact right away. You remember in the first saw when he tried to start sawing the chain down with that? <laughs> because he was like, I don't want to have to cut my leg off, right? Uh, and if he would have yeah, just yeah, okay. shorted all of it, cut his leg off, and got out of the room, he would have lived, right? Mm. Or cut his foot off, right? So it's that fear that, like, let's see if, like, let's attempt, like, something that is reasonable first. And I know that not voting doesn't sound reasonable to some people. <laughs> But you got to cut the foot off. You got to say no more, in my opinion, because there's no way you can quantify that your vote matters or is helping. Government is a lagging indicator. It follows public opinion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Government (laughs) always exists because of public opinion. Opinion is the only thing uh, why government exists. Yeah. Yeah. So people people give it authority and legitimacy. You know, people... People yeah. give it the well, power. When someone hears 98% people didn't vote, yeah, that's going to be a lot better than 98% did vote, and now we have a shitty guy in office. So there's no way you can tell oh, me that uh, everyone voted and, and the guy got in and nothing changed, right? That that would that would not be that, – that the opposite would not be a better uh, course of action. If 98% people didn't vote and there was an election held, it would be like – Wait a second. 2% of the population picked this guy? No way. Not, well, no way. See, I mean, I, I don't know if it'll ever reach that level. I know it won't, but... but it's. I mean, it's already... What was it? It was... I mean, it was definitely left less than 50. It was it less than closer to 60 percent that didn't vote the last election. No, no. People are going to no, no. vote this government away with their dollar when the dollar collapses and they move to something else. That's all that this is that the only thing that's holding America, the government together right now is the dollar and people have so much invested in the dollar that 
that's another fear that they have is a dollar collapse, a government collapse, they lose all of their worth. So the minute their worth starts going down, they're going to invest outside of that currency and America will be no more because any, any anybody who's anybody who's who actually is actively doing that is already investing in other things. Exactly. So yeah. No, no, you'll see it when like the common folk are like, "Whoa, we got to get out of the dollar." I don't think it's going to get rid of government, though. I mean, government's an idea. You know, it's a, no, no, it's a mental state. They're going to create it again. And, you know, the, the United States might be gone, but it's going to be something else. So, so, so that's why you know that's why we are focusing on you know getting these ideas of uh, of voluntarism and 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 capitalism through people's heads, so they understand its illegitimacy. Yeah, well, that's why that's say, you know the same reason to try to build build the systems up. So, so people, so when the inevitable collapse happens, more people are not clamoring for more of the same, right. just like a tweak. Mm -hmm. And instead more, there'll be more people that go, Hey, we don't need it because we already have this. We already, right. you know, we did this without them. So why can't we do this again? You know? So, right. you know, which is our, our whole, you know, that's our mission here, right? Plant those seeds, get people thinking and get them prepared for. Like I said, it's it is inevitable. I mean, we talk about it. It's inevitable. We can't. It, it will it will collapse. It's just going to happen. It's just a matter of when. So and how smooth the transition will be. And I think that's that's our job. Our, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to depend job. on us. <laughs> yeah, going to depend on us. How smooth that will be. Um, but uh, but yeah, we should wrap this up. And mm -hmm. and I'll just say one more thing on this. Uh, I was uh, asked by a, a family member recently, you know, who I <laughs> talking about candidates, you know, who I who I liked as a candidate, not necessarily voted, but who I like or who do you think is going to be president? And I said, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect my life. I'm not going to change the way I parent, the way I look at my friends, the way I look at my family, <laughs> you know, my views on business and you know, right. and 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 the way people interact, it doesn't change that. It doesn't affect me. Yeah, it doesn't well. matter. It doesn't, you know. Um, and uh, and so, I um, is completely irrelevant to me. Um, and therefore, it's like Dave said, it's a waste of time, and it's can and it's quite destructive for uh, the future of our species as a whole. So, um, so yeah, that's what uh, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about all the Bernie supporters, right? When Bernie. When when Hillary goes out, right, she's gonna win. She's already got basically the delegates. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they, the the article I saw yesterday was Bernie could win California and New York, and Hillary would still have the delegates. So <laughs> he's done. Yeah. So there you go. We so, go with the absolutes. But well, no, I mean, obviously right. the FBI could release what they need to about Hillary or what we think the worst case scenario is going on on with her, and she her campaign would be done tomorrow, but. For some reason, they're not doing that. Which I mean, if I think that's why a lot of Democrat voters are are, are like really upset this year. They're like, we had this fresh face Obama last time, and now we've got Hillary. She couldn't beat Obama, and she's it's looking really bad for her. I mean, I, I doubt she'll ever go to prison, but she might be out of politics very soon. Okay, now you're just now you're just sending. Conflicting messages. All no. right, I, th I, th I think I think we're, I'm gonna follow Danilo's lead, and we're gonna we're, we are gonna wrap this up. Uh, I don't okay, really have much do. else. To, I don't have much else to add. <laughs> um, but uh, it was it was nice to have a conversation with just you two guys. I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. I suppose. If we I'm have glad, to, you know. we have to. I'm glad we talked about Danilo memes. There, there was something I really yes, wanted to that talk was about. Uh, that was fun. fun. <laughs> oh well, let me ask you, what, what was the most popular Danilo meme, like the, with the most shares and reach? Uh, I think I think Dave's original one still got the most shares. I think that one hit the, the that one wow. was the ladies. One. But I've heard of the now, Federal Reserve. Now we're now we're now I'm able, now I'm tracking them because I'm 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 launching instead of because I I was just putting them directly on your on your wall but right. now I started launching them through this because enough people enough enough of our fans uh, of our page were were liking them at, after I was you know putting them on yours and then putting them there so I was like well I'll just put them here now <laughs> um mm -hmm. so now I'll be able to track it and what was it the I guess the one two couple memes ago I forget which one now whichever one I sent you guys the the screenshot of I guess that was the uh, one, 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 of the hot, one of the hot mom ones um <laughs> got you know is, is, is gotten i think it was our, our got the third highest reach and um shares and likes out of uh, of the week of all of our other memes so that was the, and that's the biggest we've done with vanilla memes that in, in that capacity so that was cool nice <clears throat> 
Jeremy is an emerging meme king. In there. <laughs> I, I still have a lot to learn. I, I'm just lucky. I, I hope I he have... doesn't get burned out. That's that's my only fear. Is, is no, I'm gonna. I'm, well, no, that's what happened before. I went through. You know, I'll I'll, I'll back off for for a week or two when I need to, and then I'll, I'll recharge and I'll start again. But like I, I was gonna just gonna say, I'm I'm lucky. I have a couple of friends now that are, are really good at this stuff and are, are willing to help me, because um, I'm still not in their league, because uh, I still suck at Photoshop. But uh, outside yeah. outside of that, I'm getting pretty good, I think. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm no good at Photoshop either. But, so awesome. This was fun. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, awesome conversation, gentlemen. Um, so we will wrap this up. If anyone wants to help us out, you, know, you can donate to us uh, Bitcoin or Patreon. That's patreon.com slash seeds of liberty to help us out. Please do so. We love doing this. We want to do more, interview more fascinating people, and um, we trade value for value. So if you find value in our content, please donate to us, so we can uh, so you can help us spread the message of uh, freedom and volunteerism throughout the land. <laughs> so awesome conversation, Jeremy and Dave. Thanks for thank you very much. Uh, so this is Seeds of Liberty podcast. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Peace. Peace. Loving head. <laughs>